I'm Chris Thorne, and this is the 7 day $100 Walmart Survival Challenge. In this challenge, there's only one rule. Take your limited kit and do what you gotta do to make it out the other side. going on everybody so we are here as you surmised by the title for my seven day $100 Walmart survival challenge where I have a $100 survival kit in this pack now if you want to know all the contents in the pack and all the details and how I break it down there's gonna be a video whoop, right there in the right hand corner where it's actually the build video which is actually video one for this playlist if you're just coming in this for the first time we're gonna have a full playlist where we're gonna break it down every single day days one through seven plus the build so you can guys get a full spectrum of this adventure and uh not gonna lie even though i did a 30 day survival challenge i had the best the best gear so i'm a little nervous but enough yapping let's get the building Whew. Ah, it's getting a little warm outside south texas weather sucks <laughs> It'll be cool one that minute, and then it's freaking 80 degrees in the middle of freaking the winter. We don't get winters the same way everybody else up north does, so. <sighs> All right. So I'll give you guys a brief overview of what I brought. So over the next seven days, because this is a $100 survival challenge, there's a lot of things I couldn't bring. There's a lot of like hunting implements and things that I would love to do out here that I just don't have the skills yet, or I just couldn't afford to buy them. So I did buy two breakfast skillets, like I said, that's in the breakdown video. But if I ration that out carefully, considering it is two servings a piece, those, I should be able to get about 300 calories a day. So I should get 1200 calories over the next, at least for the first four days. But we do have an ability to try to set out some throw lines hopefully so let's take out everything got my cook set pot got the Sawyer mini filter got a one liter water bag this is my shelter got the straw filter Christmas bells for notification I even have some uh, jute for some fire tinder, which is really nice. Have some circle hooks for catfishing. Got a little survival knife. Got my ultra high quality machete that I that cost me maybe five dollars. Folding saw, which will probably end up doing most of the work because this shelter is basically an emergency blanket on steroids and I don't know if I'll even want to trust that for a night over the three nights so we're probably gonna build a real shelter which is gonna be really intense then I got a little hatchet that is pretty useless but I might be able to be able to do something with it if I get a 90 degree spine maybe I can use it as a fair rod striker or something but this is probably gonna be my best friend outside of the folding saw which is gonna be 50 foot hank of paracord it's got the seven inner strands it's gonna be really nice but yeah, this is a huge, huge, huge challenge compared to things that I've had to deal with in the past. So I got my $1 headlamp. <laughs> I've got my Ozark Trail flashlight. Fair rod. And then my line for the shelter. So, But at least I got a little 10 liter bag to carry everything in. I can carry other things in it. So let's get to building.
Is this not the Marriott or what? Like, I am going to be staying in the lap of absolute luxury for the next seven days. All right, before we get too far into this challenge, uh, we wanna go ahead and do a day one weigh-in because we're gonna do a day seven weigh-in and see how this challenge has affected me and my um, ability to maintain weight and calories. I have a feeling I'm gonna lose weight while I'm on this challenge, but we wanna see if we can mitigate that as much as possible while we're out here because the whole point is sustainability. All right, so we are looking at 240. So we've got the shelter built up and that's really great, but we need to be able to give it that triangle formation. So we need to find big, huge, nasty rocks so I can go set it down and kind of create a stable platform to be able to handle some form of light wind and rain. Alrighty. Hey, something like that will work. All right. So that's a good size rock that'll do, but we got to find a few more just like it. So this is what the shelter looks like. I think I'm gonna grab a couple more stones to put them in the middle to just give it a little more rigidity, but that's home for a little while. So in my opinion, I am definitely gonna be building a more sound sh shelter. This thing is literally a glorified emergency blanket and I don't know too many people that would trust that. Well, I'm definitely armor crawling, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this ain't bad, this'll do. I really would've liked the ground cover to go underneath this because any sticks or anything will poke through and just jack this thing up. But all in all, it's actually warmer in here than it is out there. It's blocking the wind. Hopefully it'll be able to trap some heat. But whew. I think it's time to go get some water and then we're gonna start working on for the rest of the evening. We're gonna work on actually uh, fortifying the shelter a little bit and making it more secure. Whew. Ah, so spacious. Got the folding saw, gonna go find me a nice thick hardy dead tree that I can use to build the horizontal frame for my shelter. Not exactly straight. <laughs> oh, 
this is convenient. A Y-shaped trunk. right there <sighs> so it's time for me to put this uh, knife and paracord to use gotta be there we go all right time to get this thing because I need all these inner strands for like throw lines and fishing lines and any other utility cordage so Need to try to preserve as much of this as possible. Wow, this knife is razor sharp. Oh, <laughs> this is definitely not a custom knife. <laughs> oh, what I would give to have like a, my one of my Casey knives or one of my Fiddleback Forge knives. Oh God. Oh. I would just feel spoiled at that point. I, I just feel like I was spoiled the whole time. Two thousand years later. Well, that only took a few minutes, but that's my favorite method if I have to um, gut a long piece of paracord, just tie it to a tree. Once it snip tied off, tie the innards off, and it just starts slowly pulling out slack. Works pretty well. It only takes like 15, 20 minutes. You could probably do it faster, good, but that's the fastest way I know. If anybody actually has, you know what? If you have a faster method of gutting, like 50 feet or more of fair cord, because you need it, um, I'd love to hear from you guys if you have a method that works. So definitely drop down in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to learn a little bit more about this. We're just going to leave it slack just so I can see how much I need to secure this. Because I'm still gonna sleep in here, but I want to make sure I have a more secure frame. So if we have any storms come through, and we have any widow makers, any deadfall come and crash down, it'll hopefully hit my kind of like A-frame shelter that I have over this. This will keep me warm and the wind and the rain off of me, but this will keep any other crap and just help make it a little stronger. And maybe, if that thing gets destroyed or goes to crap, maybe I'll just go full on and go bushcraft shelter on everybody. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of like it right there. Maybe. Ooh, right there. That's a good spot. Okay. It's good to know I can use my shoulders for this. So I'm just looping this cordage around and then we're going to take this other side and make like an X pattern and through that then we're going to loop this around and really cinch this thing down so we can start actually um, cutting down other branches and getting things squared away.
All right, now we're gonna cinch all this down. I need to go get a stick so I can get some more leverage on this thing. Just tie this off. There you go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and untie this real quick, so I can stash this these inner strands for tomorrow. Cause despite my best efforts and my plans and things I want to do. It's already four o'clock. So the sun goes down an hour and a half. So I got to set priorities before the sun goes down to go get water, start a fire, all that good stuff. And we'll work on trying to get some catfish lines and things set up in the morning. I'm getting a little thirsty. I think the next thing I need to do is go get some water. Then I'm gonna spend the rest of daylight trying to uh, process some more wood so I can get the shelter starting to look more like a shelter. Go ahead and get my water stuff. But it's something, I guess. Got both bottles of water filled. This is great. Holds a liter and holds 16 ounces. I miss my 10 liter. <laughs> so my initial impression so far, um, I really don't like this $100, seven day $100 challenge. Not a fan of it already. <laughs> uh, the knives aren't super sharp. 
the stuff that I have access to aren't. However, at the same time, it also makes me appreciate all of the high level gear I do have at home that is in my actual like real bug out bag and lets me know that those things are going to be able to make my life easier in a wilderness survival situation given if I can find a way to make it through seven days with some of the most subpar gear I've ever tested or tried or touched in my life it should be good but like not a lot of the gear is crappy I mean I've got a sword mini water filter which I know plenty of people have um, we've got a 50 foot hank of paracord. It's not bad and that $10 saw those three items so far right off the rip are probably some of the best values that are in this kit. Alright Well, hypothetically This should screw it on Oh, and it does It's like they were made in the same package uh, Alrighty Mm. Hmm. That didn't take long at all. Ooh. That tastes good. Mmm. Okay. Let's go ahead. Save that. I got work to do. All right, so at best, yeah, I got about an hour worth of daylight left, so <laughs> I'm still laughing about this, but it was it was technically a headlamp and it was in my budget. So I got the Ozark Trail $1 headlamp. I'll go ahead and put this on. The thing is, is the LED light I have on the camera that is on the phone is like 20 times brighter than this thing, so. All right, well, I gotta spend the rest of my daylight, I'm going to work on the shelter, get some firewood going, and hopefully I can get some calories in my system because, honestly, I'm, I'm starving. <sighs> well, so far... What I can say is this little $10 saw, I'm not kidding. This thing I would say is right on par with like a Baco. Definitely not a Silky saw or a Corona, but holy crap. For like 10 bucks, I dig it. Hey, what? <sighs> just keep working, just keep working. Back to work. <sighs> okay, I gotta get a drink.
this starts giving you guys an idea of what I'm working on. I'm not done. I had ran out of t daylight for today. But I think for tonight, this will do. Whew, it's getting chilly. That's why I brought my jacket. Now, I gotta start working on getting some firewood and a fire starter because I want some food. Whew. All right. Let's get some jute. Huh, I might just flip it away. That should do. Let's get this thing rolling. Oh, I need that. Color me impressed. Not bad. Walmart stuff. Not bad at all. I ain't living the good life, but I'm outside and my fire still works. Pain in the butt. There you go. Right. Well, I got the fire going. Given the fact that for tonight, all I'm going to be doing is boiling water. It's kind of overkill, but it's I did that on purpose because I'm cold. I wanted to make sure I was going to be warm. Now, with that said, this actually had 90 degree spine, a little knife, and not gonna lie. Little ghetto little fire still. It ain't bad. <laughs> So there's no graduation marks in this thing, so it's all gonna be eyeballing it. Hopefully I boil enough water or I don't boil off too much. All right, well, that's pretty much all my water. Okay, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna act, I'm gonna cook the whole thing, but I'm only gonna eat half of it tonight so I have food for tomorrow too. Cause I have no idea when I'll be able to actually get catfish out of the river. Woo! 
Ooh, those clothes are hot. Whew. Starting to boil already. Those clothes are nice and hot. Smells good. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Hope that isn't messing with you guys too bad. Luckily for me, I've got two bowls in here. So what I'm gonna do is actually. Divide this up into both bowls, eat one of them tonight, and then put this in the stack in my canteen area and save the second half for tomorrow evening. I'll heat it up and everything. Dear Lord, thank you for this adventure. Thank you for making sure that I have food, that we have made it so far. Day one, we've got a fire started, and despite the <laughs> lack of quality of the gear that we've got, you are going to bless this journey and this food to our bodies, and we can have a successful seven-day journey. Amen. All right, so... <sighs> First bite. That was worth it. Worth it. Now here's the crazy thing. I've got this because I don't know how I'm going to be able to... I don't know. Well, no, no. I don't know how effective my uh, throw lines are going to be for the catfish. Right now I got no bait. I've got it hooked. I've got the inner cord for the paracord, but I'm on bait. So, the only thing I can use realistically is I could probably, uh, I don't know, wake up in the morning, look for some grasshoppers, crickets, worms, something. See if I get lucky. Additionally, once I set the throw lines out and put the bells on them and all that good stuff, um, I'm probably gonna do some foraging. See if we have any uh, cactus, cactus fruits roaming around at all. See if there's any, I don't know, persimmons, briar vine tips, pecans, you name it. Mmm. It's so good when you've been working all day and you get your first meal. It's so better than, so much better than going hungry. Oh man. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we're going to have too much of um, a barometric trip pressure drop. Um, I have the Range Man by G-Shock. It gives me barometric pressure readings, which is really cool. It's about the closest thing I can get to the Weather Channel. It just lets me know when the barometric trip... When the, blah, 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 can't talk. When the barometric pressure drops... It's like an inclination that it's going to be something interesting coming your way, basically. Uh, colder weather, rain, things like that. Mm. 
but I want to get an early start tomorrow. Right now, it's about eight o'clock. I want to get a bunch of firewood going. Go out and get the lines, make those up, get that set up, do some foraging. I'm not looking forward to sleeping in the in the emergency shelter though. What's going on everybody? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to I'm not even try to break any bones about it. But with that said though, it's not bad in here. The wind chill totally goes away in here. I do feel a little bit warmer in here already. I'm not looking forward to sleeping though, because right, right underneath that would be uh, that'd be grass. Luckily, it's winter time because I would be typically worried about uh, spiders, scorpions, tons of ants, but the bugs seem to just kind of just disappear at, uh, in the winter time. They're still there, obviously, but they kind of just whoop, burrow. Oh. I gotta go. I gotta go get comfortable. Good oh. oh. night, everybody.